Hi there, it's MJ again, Product Support Manager here at JBS Equipment. And in today's Tech Tuesday video, I'm going to be showing you how to disassemble and reassemble a wide body gearbox on your spreader. Let's go back into the shop and I'll show you what I've got going on there. Okay then, before we get going here, I just want to show you that it's always a good idea to mark spline orientation. So you see those two splines kind of line up with the length of the gearbox. Same with these two. Now, if yours is all broken, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to time this when we go to put everything back together. Okay, first step to removing this output shaft is removing the six bolts around the perimeter. 22 millimeter impact socket. Just like that. All right, next we're gonna pull this out. I made up this little puller jig here. Basically, it's a 14 millimeter bolt welded to a piece of three quarter inch ready rod. And before we go and thread that in, make sure this is all cleared up. Okay. Drop this in here. Boom, just like that. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and uh, remove all the bolts from this side and yank it out. Okay, so now we've got the output shaft removed. I want you guys to make note of how many gaskets were here. If there's one and you rip it, replace it with the same, just a single gasket. If there's multiple gaskets, replace it with multiples. Okay. These are kind of used to set uh, depth and everything. Pinion depth, gears, backlash, that kind of stuff. Okay. So we can set that to the side. Next in here, we have a spacer. That needs to go back in after. And then our gear. Now, if you've noticed, there's a cutout on either side here. That lines up perfectly with this gear. Kind of take and rotate this out. Boom, Bob's your uncle. Set that to the side. And at the very bottom, tapered bearing. And if you see, look closely, the shell or the race for that bearing is still in there. We'll leave that in there for now. Okay, in order to remove this drive gear here, it's held on with a big old nut and there's a star kind of keeper washer in here. This little tab is bent down into this cutout. So we're gonna take, um, start with a screwdriver, AKA pry bar, flat punch, chisel, whatever you want to call it, all right? We're gonna get it started. And then we're gonna grab a squared off chisel I actually did this up just specifically for working on these. Okay, once that's bent out of the way, this should be left-hand thread. Ugh. So, we'll take our square chisel. So once you've knocked this thing loose, take our pair of trusty channel lock type things here, and we're just going to Kind of break it free. I've squirted a little bit of brake clean in here to try and loosen up the um, all the Loctite. It feels fairly free now. Let's wind this off. Okay, spins free. Now, if you look closely here. There's a chamfer. That chamfer goes inbound towards this locking washer, okay? Next, we're gonna take the little lock washer off here. Back to our screwdriver slash pry bar. All right, work our way around it. See if we can pop it off here. Not quite. More Loctite. Stuff is wicked and terrible at the same time. All right, 
See how they're all like folded inbound? That goes out. Okay. And then you should be able to pop the, oh, look at that. Beautiful. There we go. That all has been taken apart. All right then, next we're gonna grab the old Ugga Dugga here and remove that input gear assembly. Let's do it. Now, just like the output shafts, however many gaskets were here have to be used to put it back together. Okay, so when it comes time, if you need to remove this gear off of here, there's a retaining clip here, big old E clip or C clip. Pop that off, gear will slide over. If you were needing to remove the whole shaft, it's going to slide out to the passengers, to the, yeah, passenger side, sorry. So yeah, clip, slide, remove. So if you need to fully disassemble all of this, I highly, highly suggest taking a paint pen or a marker or some punch dots or something and label this. I would like one and one, two and two, three, three, four, four, five, and six. This will just help make sure when you put it all back together, everything all lines up. Because I'm not sure if you can see on camera here, but these sets of bolts are not across from each other. They're actually indexed because these aren't perpendicular to each other. So yeah, label it all up before you disassemble it. Makes it so much easier to put back together and put back together correctly the first time. We're at the point now where everything's all clean, taken apart, and we're ready to go back together. We're gonna start off with putting the output shafts back in, get those timed up properly, then we'll move on to the input shaft. It's time to put the cross shaft gear back in, so we'll drop that in there. Make sure it's fully seated. We'll grab our locking washer with tabs on it. Remember, tabs away from the gear. Right, like so. We'll put a little bit of Loctite on this. Okay, after we've got our um, star washer on there, a little bit of Loctite, we'll thread this on. There we go. Nice and simple. There we go, now it's not catching. So what we're gonna do being that these are kind of like a, a tapered wheel bearing, we're gonna tighten them up as such. So we're gonna snug this up. And you'll feel eventually that this becomes stiff to turn. And that nut starts to get tight. So now we roll this now a little bit more. All we're trying to do is set the bearing. So now it's nice and stiff. We're gonna back it off. All the way loose. Got the bearing set here and just a couple good little taps. Give this a feel. Maybe a little bit more. Something like that. A little bit of rolling resistance is perfect. We want a tiny bit of preload on there. Once, here, show ya. Got it really close and a tab lines up to the little groove here. We'll take our handy dandy punch and then tap that down. There, this is all locked down now ready for reassembly. We'll go ahead and start dropping shafts in. Well, it's time to put one of the output shafts back in. So I'll show you kind of the part stack, the order in which it all goes back together. We're gonna to start with our bearing. Drop that back in there, make sure it spins freely and nice. Next, we're gonna take our big old gear here, drop this down inside. 
Make sure it lines up. Now, very important, can't forget the washer or the spacer. Drop that in there. Next is going to be our gasket. Now, if you guys recall, when I took this side apart, only one gasket was there. So that's what we're going to put back. Drop our gasket in line here. Now, when we go to drop this in, nice and gentle, we'll try and make sure that those lineup marks that we put on there at the start still line up. I'll give it a little wiggle. Perfect. You can kind of feel it engaged and it's feel started in the bearing. Now I'll just grab a mallet here and tap it on down. Slight moment there. We're going to grab our mallet, tap it down. Okay, that's just all the way up, just about all the way down. Should be good enough. Now, these had Loctite on them. I recommend this stuff, Loctite 243. Good medium strength and it resists oil, which is perfect for this application. Just toss a little bit on here. Now, if your bolts were all nasty and oily and stuff, clean them off with some brake clean. This stuff will not set if everything's covered in oil. These bolts are nice and fresh, so there's no oil on them yet, so no need for that cleaning. One more. There we go. Okay, we're gonna snug them up. I recommend either using a smaller impact or a ratchet. Nothing major, because we wanna actually torque these after. We're gonna snug them up in a bit of a crisscross pattern, finish pulling it the rest of the way down. There we go. All cinched down. We'll come back after with a torque wrench and torque all this up. After you've done, just make sure to give it a bit of a wiggle. Make sure it's not binding, feels funny, anything like that. All right, let's go to the other side. We'll get that side put together. Okay, just like the other side, bearing first. Make sure that turns nicely. I'll take our gear here, kind of fold this under, and then our spacer, get that lined up here, and I'm going to sound like a broken record again, but a single gasket came off, so a single gasket's going on here. Now. The important part, very important, that when we drop this in here, these splines are perfectly lined up across. I'll give you guys a bit of an over, overhead shot with a straight edge and show you exactly what I'm talking about. But this one, I got really lucky and it pretty much dropped in. You may need to lift it up and try a new spline to make sure everything's in a row. Grab our knockometer here. Everything's all lined up. Couple taps. Down. That last one sounded kind of solid. Now the hat's up a little bit. All right. Once again, Loctite 243. Go ahead and spin all these in. Beauty. 
All right, time to bust out the torque wrench. Okay, so just so we all have a good understanding of what I'm talking about when, I'm, when I've mentioned aligning all the splines up. So I got a straight edge here, here we'll back off for a sec, across the output shafts. So we'll come in here, right like that, follows across, right like that. That's what we want when we put it all back together. That way we can get the screw timing correct. Well, it's time to torque all these up. These bolts require 110 foot-pounds. There we go. Perfect. Okay, last big heavy kind of chunk to put back in. We're gonna put the uh, input housing and shaft back in. We'll put the gasket back on. And just in case you guys were curious, all three of these components use the same gasket. So one part number, kind of nice. We get that semi lined up, take our shaft assembly, pop it in here. Uh, which way do we want? Like that. Now, if just by happenstance, you pop this in, it's index one notch over, not a big deal. Try and get this. Once again, Loctite 243. Not sponsored by Loctite or anything, it's just what we got here at the shop. Okay, here we go. Once again, 22 millimeter impact socket, or at least this 7 8 identifies as one. Awesome little new toy, tool, toy, whatever. Okay, let's grab the torque wrench. Same thing, 110 foot-pounds. Okay. Perfect. Six. Perfect, there we go. That concludes this episode of Tech Tuesday. As you can see, I've got some stuff to clean up. Be sure to like and follow us on our social media platforms for more news and updates. And if you got another video idea, drop it in the comment section below. Take care guys.